how are you today? Well, here's Edith, and I want to do a video today about the situation in the Middle East that's kind of flaring up. And so everybody is now, not everybody, but many people are now again screaming, oh, Gog and Magog, war is near, especially the Jews or some Jewish Groups are screaming, oh, the Gog and Magog war is near. Yes, it's ramping up, or the situation is getting a little hot um, between Iran and Israel. And guess why? It's not Iran's fault, it's Israel's fault, because they flew some drones into Iran's uh, territory. Yeah, and it's not, it's, it's not the Iran that is causing the problem. As usual, it's Israel provoking its neighbors and cannot stay within their limits. See, Israel still has this idea of a larger Israel, okay? That's what the whole problem is. They think they have the right to um, take over the countries around them. Yeah, that's what the problem is. And therefore, they think they can uh, war with everybody. And so people say, well, uh, well, what is uh, the UN doing about this? They're supposed to be keeping peace when a, a, a country is invaded by another one. Well, since Israel is under the protection of the U.S., they can actually do what they want. Other countries can't, like Iran definitely can't. They get sanctioned, or hmm, Russia, or China. They all get sanctioned, okay? Even though they may be part of the U.N., but they're not uh, the top people, right? So they're just the foot soldiers in the UN, and so they have to obey by the rules. But the top people, the 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 US and the NATO people, they don't have to obey by the rules. They have exceptions. Now that is my interpretation, of course, people, right? But remember my last video about the UN. The UN is corrupt, and it's working for the beast system and for, I don't want to say new world order, because it's not for the beast system, which is an old order. And they want world dominion. Has always been that way. So, and Israel is part of it. So they think they can do what they want and not get any sanctions. So now it's flaring up in Israel, and they do that all the time. They always have to be in war with somebody else. So therefore, I'll tell you right now, there is never going to be a peace treaty with Israel. Never. Because Israel is a warring country. They think they have the right to war. But they don't. They do not. They lost their country because of uh, um, uh, idolatry. And that happened way before the um, Babylonian captivity. They never got their land really back after the Babylonian captivity until 40, what is, when was it, 40, 48, when they finally were allowed to return to Judah, but only the Jews and the Benjamites came back. And that's very important to understand. And many of the Jews today are not even, uh, they cannot even trace the heritage back to Abraham. They are, hmm, yeah, pagan. They are pagan, the pagans that accepted um, Christianity, I mean, uh, uh, Judaism or they are also, they were intermarrying. That's another thing that happened within the last 2,000 years, that the Jews intermarried with the pagans so bad that their bloodline is just totally diluted, uh, if you can really say that. And it doesn't matter, because Messiah came already. 
And the reason for keeping the bloodline pure is to ensure that Messiah can actually come into this world. So anyways, I have talked about these things in my videos. Today I want to talk again about this uh, Gog and Magog um, war that now the Jews are screaming again. Now, do the Jews really have the ability to actually understand the Bible? And here I'm telling you no. Because a lot of people say, oh, the Jews should know how to, how to understand. Now, I'm purposely not using the word interpret because I don't believe in interpreting. Uh, no, you don't interpret the Bible. You can assume it, but it doesn't make it right. Now, true understanding of the Bible comes through the Bible. The, the explanation comes through the Bible. It doesn't come through somebody's opinion. And so when the Jews or the Jewish scholars, the rabbis, when they read about the Gogan Mago Greek in Ezekiel 38 and 39, what kind of references do they have? They actually don't have any references. They don't know when that war is going to happen. Now, there's key elements, key elements that tell us clearly when this war cannot happen, okay? And I'm going to look at those again. I have already done a video about the Gog and Mako Greek. You can uh, Mako war if you look back. But it seems like we're having these conflicts now. And I think these conflicts that we're having in the Middle East right now is to distract from the Ukraine, from what they're doing in the Ukraine, that there is going to be a, a war started, the Third World War starting in Ukraine. And they're distracting, okay? They're distracting from that. And they're misleading the believers, not only the Jewish believer, believers, but especially the believers, the, the Christian believers that are stuck in dispensationalism. Because the biggest thing about dispensationalism is Zionism. It's, it, it's the favoring of the Jews and thinking that the Jews will have uh, some seven-year period of time during which God... Uh, I don't know. They have a special time uh, from God, which they uh, uh, base on Daniel's last week, 70th week. Okay? The, the, Daniel's 70th week, which they say is not fulfilled for the Jews yet. I have talked about these topics. I have definitely studied these topics in detail not too long ago. That Daniel's 70 week, 70th week is over. There is no 70th week left. So all of seven, all of the 70 weeks of Daniel are over. And we need to understand that there is no more time for the Jews or the Hebrew time. There is right now a time of the Gentiles that will last for 2,000 years. And after that, we have the day of the Lord. There is no seven years for the Jews. And of course, that is the basic thing that people need to understand. And the Jews, uh, the rabbis and the scholars, they don't want to see that either. They don't even believe in the 70 weeks of you know, of Daniel. They reject Daniel because if they would read that Daniel, they would absolutely know that Daniel predicted exactly when the Messiah would come. And during Jesus' time, the people knew Messiah would come during that time. Only the ones that didn't want Messiah to come, like the Pharisees, because it would 
absolutely shake their system and bring down their system. And that's why they didn't want Messiah to come. That's why the Jews never want Messiah or the leading Jews don't even want Messiah to come. You understand that. They don't want Messiah to come because it would absolutely shake their system. They would have to create a Messiah according to their system. And their system, according to the prophets, has to come down if the new covenant is introduced, which already has been introduced. The new covenant that Daniel talked about in Jeremiah, he got it from Jeremiah 31.31, that new covenant is here. And when that new covenant starts or started, the old was over. That means the old system, the the the, the law of the 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 system that is was under the law of Moses is now over, and the Pharisees then would lose their power. And that's exactly how it was during Jesus's time. They would have lost their power if they would have accepted the Messiah. The way he came, and that's why they killed him. It's really interesting. I talked about this、uh, TV series, The Chosen, and I think the writer of The Chosen, and I'm not, you know, what I'm talking about, right? Because it's a, it's it's a novel,、um, it's a film script.、Uh, brought that in very well. This struggle of the The Pharisees and their teaching of the Pharisees that clashed absolutely, you know, with what Jesus taught. And so now today, we have a lot of Zionist Christians that think, "Oh my goodness, the Jews! They have to know how to interpret Ezekiel thirty-eight. They just have to, because only Jews can really understand this culture. No people." What we want and what we need is the Holy Spirit, and the Jews don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the teachers of the Jews. There's a lot of Jews that accepted Messiah and have the Holy Spirit, but then you cannot be on the, under their own old system anymore. That old system has to go away. When you introduce a new covenant, the old is gone. So when we go to Ezekiel and people,、um, we're going to do that. I'm trying to find it.、Um, I'll hold on to my. All right. Here I have it. Sometimes it takes me a while to find what I want to read. But yeah, when we go into、uh, Ezekiel thirty-eight, we have to depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us. And no, the Jewish leaders don't have the Holy Spirit. Number two, we need a second witness. To actually understand the Gog and Magog war, and there is no better than Revelation twenty. It mentions again Gog and Magog war. So many people they just think, oh, what is Gog? What is Magog? And there are so many、uh, false assumption about who Gog is and who Magog is. And you know, some say, "Oh, it's Russia because of today what's going on with Russia." And people, why in the world would Russia go against Israel? Why in the world would they go against Israel? They have no nothing with Israel right now. Right now, they have something with, of course, first the Ukraine, and then I'll tell you what else they have against right now. Is Europe or Germany, because they are supporting 
Ukraine, the war in Ukraine. Yes, Israel is part of that too, of the NATO. But I don't think that they have actually supported uh, the Ukraine with any military equipment. But Germany did. And I'll, I'll guarantee you right now that if Russia will start a war, it will continue to move forward towards the Rhine River. In other words, Ukraine, and they will run over all the countries that used to belong to Russia before. Okay? So all the way, East Germany, and they will run all the way to the Rhine River. And maybe that's when they are going to be stopped. I have mentioned this guy, um, Elmeyer, the German seer, um, that predicted that Russia will invade Germany. And then that the, uh, the NATO, the rest of the NATO, will... Um, uh, throw chemical weapons and I am interpreting his vision as chemical weapons over Germany to destroy not only Germany but or they had no intent well I'm not sure if they had any intentions to destroy Germany but they wanted to destroy of course the Russian forces and create a corridor so they wouldn't, Russia could not invade um, uh, France and the rest of um, Europe anymore. So this is what the seer predicts. And I, people, I can see where that is most likely going to happen. Okay? This is where this war with Russia is going. It's not going towards the Middle East. There is going to be a war in the Middle East as a result of this third world war that they're starting. Because once the NATO defeats Russia, China will continue the war and that is when China will invade the Middle East with all its um, allies. That is when then they're going to go against Israel or towards the Middle East. I'll guarantee you that because that is biblical. That is what Revelation says. Revelation talks about an Armageddon War at the end. Go to Revelation 16. I think 16, 16. I believe that's where it is. It's the uh, sixth bowl of wrath, of God's wrath. Now that Armageddon war is described many times, okay, in Revelation Every time you see a war described in Revelation, it's the Armageddon War. It's also described, I believe, in Revelation 11. Is it 11 or 10? Let me stop my video and check it out. Yes, it's in Revelation 9. It's the sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four ho uh, horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the six angels who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. That's what we are having today. Okay? And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops, and here it's talking about the troops, it's not just the angels, but the angels are just opening it so the troops can come in. In Revelation 16, the sixth bowl, 
it says that the kings of the east come and invade the Middle East. It's the same event, okay? Very same event. It's not two events. And it says the number of the t- mounted troops was twice ten thousand times ten thousand. Okay, and then you you can read and the horses and the riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were f- a fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. You can read the whole thing. I don't have to tell you more. The rest of mankind were not killed by the plagues. Um. Still did not, and they still did not repent. So here it is describes this battle. This battle is again described, I believe, in Revelation fourteen. Okay, in Revelation fourteen, it's described too. Now it doesn't say Armageddon here, and it doesn't say Armageddon war. Um. In Revelation 14, but it's the war. It's this last war during the wrath of God. Okay, it's the last war. So, people make no mistake. It tells you that there is a last battle, and therefore, I believe that this third world、um, war. Will end with this Armageddon war. This last war, the Third World War, will culminate in this last uh, uh, battle. Okay. It says here.、Um, it says fourteen, fourteen, fourteen. I looked. And there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man, with a crown of gold on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel followed, okay, or came out of the temple, with a loud voice, "Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe." Oh my goodness! This is exactly, and the angel in nineteen is as angel swung a sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes and threw it into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, outside the city. Now you listen to me. This is what's going to happen, okay? In this last battle. Okay, because we're now going to have to compare that to the battle of Armageddon. What you have here is they were trampled in the wine press outside the city, and blood flew out of the press, rising as high as the horse's bridle for a distance of one hundred one thousand six hundred stadia. Now, people, this is the battle. Now, do you think? That the Jews will not be part of that. I don't think so. Okay, I don't think so, because the Jews will be out there fighting in that battle, and in that battle, this is what's going to happen. All nations are gathered there. I'm talking about all nations will be gathered there. And God is not rescuing anybody. Okay, He will destroy everybody. Why? Because they didn't repent. We just read that they didn't repent. This will be a horrible, horrible battle. No, God is not here rescuing Israel. Now, how do I know this doesn't make it clear, does it? Therefore, I think we're going to have to go. And before we go to、um, Ezekiel, okay? Before we go to Ezekiel, let's talk about this last battle first—the real last battle, the last battle 
before the kingdom of God is established. The last or the battle, the last battle during the wrath of God. Because Revelation, most of Revelation, is about this battle, is about the wrath of God coming. And I have talked about that in my videos so much. Okay? Because people always say, oh, there's going to be the, the rapture and then there's going to be tribulation. No, it's called the wrath of God. And the wrath of God looks very different than tribulation. The tribulation of the saints is exactly that. The saints are being persecuted um, and killed and all that. But the wrath of God destroys the ungodly. That's what the wrath of God is. And that is what that uh, that time period after the rapture is. is when the ungodly, the ones that rejected God, the ones that did, the, not the bride, because the bride is being taken out, they are being destroyed. And nobody will be rescued people. Okay? There's not, not going to be any mercy for anybody. Because they all have rejected Jesus. They all have rejected the Holy Spirit. There is no more time for the Jews. You understand? When the Holy Spirit is gone, the Holy Spirit is gone. And it's extremely hard to even accept. Today, it's hard to accept Jesus, even with the Holy Spirit. Once the Holy Spirit is gone, it is even more difficult to accept Messiah. Even more difficult. And God is not forcing anybody ever. People always, whether they're Jews or Gentiles, have to freely accept Messiah. That's bottom line. So now, let's go to Zechariah. Because Zechariah tells us what is going to happen with um, Jerusalem, okay, when the day of the Lord starts? That means the day of the Lord starts with the wrath of God, okay? So if it's coming, that would be good. Let me stop my... All right, I have it. So... Here in Zechariah, we clearly see what happens during that last battle before the kingdom of God starts. It's, it happens during the day of the Lord, because the day of the Lord is the thousand years reign of Christ. It says right here, a day of the Lord is coming. Okay, He translates it here, um, a day of the Lord. But it's not a day. It's the day of the Lord. Okay? I think it's a wrong translation. And if you would look it up someplace else, it probably would be better um, explained. A day of the Lord. It's the day of the Lord is coming. Jerusalem, when your per, uh, possessions will be plundered and divided up within your very walls. Now we see why this day of the Lord is just before Jesus returns as king. Because we will see that in a minute. I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured. Now did you hear that? This is in the Jewish Zechariah. Now, how in the world can they explain that away? Oh, that was some other time. No, it's going to be at the end because it tells you here in a minute when it's going to be. Because we're going to have to determine when it's going to be only by the Bible, not what we think. The city will be captured, the houses ransacked, and the women raped. People, I hope you're hearing that. This is during this last battle called Armageddon War. Not Gog and Magog. Because during the Gog and Magog War, the Lord will protect the city. 
A city that is sitting in safety. We will see that later on. This city is not in safe sitting in safety. It's a different city. The Lord, it says, people will not um, see raped. Half the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations. As he did fight on the day of battle, on that day his feet will stand on Mount Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount Olives will split into two from east to west, forming a great valley with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. You will flee by the mountain valley, for it will extend to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord, my God, now listen to this. If you are a Jew and listening to this right now, okay, it says, "Then the Lord, my God, will come." How is the Lord our God coming? He is coming through Messiah, only through Messiah. Then the Lord, my God, will come, and all the holy ones with him. Who are the holy ones that are coming with him when he is coming to uh, um, destroy the enemies? Who are those? That are the holy ones. Are the bride of Christ? Those are the ones that accepted Messiah as their Lord and Savior. All who accepted Messiah for who He is, the incarnated God, God in the flesh. And they will come with him. Why will they come with him? Because they were raptured before the wrath started. When this third world war started, they were taken out. People before the wrath of God started, they were taken out. And I know people say, "Oh, the rapture doesn't exist." No, that is exactly if they're coming with God. If the holy ones are coming with God, who are the holy ones? Well, the dead in Christ, yes, but the dead in Christ people and the living. Okay, they received the new body and now are coming with Him. The souls are not coming with Him, but they're going to be people just like Jesus has a new body. These people, these these uh. uh Dead souls have a body because the transformation happened before the wrath started in the rapture, which、um, Paul described in First Thessalonians four. Now that's a lot to remember, is it? Yeah, my studies that the videos I did, my studies. They make that very clear because I do Bible studies. I show that clearly in the Bible. I'm not interpreting anything. Just like I'm not interpreting anything, anything here. What it says is what it says. Okay. It does not say that God saves Jerusalem. No, in the opposite. Because Jerusalem goes into the wrath of God when Jesus puts his foot. You know, on the Mount、uh, Zion, it splits and have why? Because there's going to be such a tremendous、uh, earthquake that will not only affect Jerusalem but the whole world, and we see that clearly, you know, in other parts of Revelation that there's going to be an earthquake at that time. It's not just Jerusalem, because as part of the wrath of God. All cities of the whole world fall. All cities. In other words, he didn't doesn't just destroy、uh, the troops that came together in front of Jerusalem in the Middle East, but he destroys every city 
on this world. Yeah, you can read that. Um, go maybe maybe it is in um, Revelation sixteen. Maybe it is in Revelation sixteen. I don't have time right now to go there because I have not even gone to Ezekiel and to explain why this last battle. The battle that is going to happen very, very soon here, as a result of the Third World War, is not the Gog and Magog War. Okay, now I say it, come out and say it. And these people that are telling you that are false teachers, and they're misleading the people, and they're scaring the people. Well, it's okay to scare because. If the people then run to Jesus and know what they have to do to be saved and to be res uh, be, to be rescued, yeah, that will help. Okay, but if they don't give them any hope, then why would I scare somebody? I want to give people hope. The hope, the hope that people have. Is that they will be in the rapture, that they will be coming back as part of the holy ones after this battle. That's what you want to hope. You don't want to hope that you staying or that you there while this battle is raging. Whether you're Jew or Gentiles, it doesn't matter. You don't want to be here during the time when all the 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 the、uh, cities of the world fall because of the earthquakes. You don't want to be there, do you? So you only have one option, and then that, that one option is to be with Jesus in heaven while these things are happening. This is what Yesaya, which I always tell you, Yesaya twenty six. Nineteen through twenty-one is saying, "Hide yourselves a little while in your chambers up in heaven, until the wrath of God has passed by." That's what Isaiah says. Well, wrote because God said it. You want to be part of the ones that are coming back with Jesus, because right now here. Jesus is going to send out his angels to collect who. He is going to collect those people that hopefully still came to faith in Christ during the wrath of God. Okay, those are the servants. Those are the elect of Matthew. Twenty four thirty one. The elect. The elect that have been sealed. Okay, there are going to be sealed ones during this time. Maybe the foolish virgins that stood in front of the door and said, "Lord, Lord," and God and Jesus said, "I didn't even know you." And maybe afterwards, when they went through or go through the wrath of God, they're realizing, "Wow, what have we done?" And maybe they continue to believe in Jesus. Those are the ones that will be then collected. By the angels, and they will only be guests to the wedding. The holy ones are the bride. They give the wedding, and they're inviting the others to the wedding. Who? The servants. Now you have to understand: you want to be a servant, or you do want to be bride. That's what you have to decide. Do you want to be servant? Do you want to be bride? Which one? Now, if you want to be bride, you have to follow the bridegroom. Period. You cannot fiddle diddle around. It's just not the way it is. So, anyways, now let's compare this to the Gog and Magog war, which will happen at the end of the kingdom, at the end of the thousand-year reign, which we will see in Revelation. You can go there, Revelation. Um, twenty. Okay, go to Revelation twenty. After the thousand years are up, Satan gets loose, and that's when he gathers all the nations again against Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem.
okay? The new Jerusalem. Not this worldly Jerusalem. No, the new Jerusalem that he is building right now. And it's coming down during the millennium. That's what they're going through. And that's what we're going to see right now in uh, Ezekiel. So let's go to Ezekiel really fast. 